Hi, welcome to Perspectives with Katie Kempner, which is a series of inspiring conversations with remarkable working women balancing busy lives. Today I'm very excited that my guest is Marissa Thalberg. Marissa, welcome. Thank you. So Marissa, can you tell us a little bit about your role? Sure. I head uh, corporate digital marketing worldwide for the Estee Lauder companies, and I also founded and run the organization and website executivemoms.com. I've been with the Estee Lauder companies for a little over six years, and what's been fantastic about this role is this is a function I essentially created when I joined the company back when our digital was really focused on e-commerce mm -hmm. and I realized it was gonna be an incredible, rare opportunity to bring transformation into a really established, really fantastic organization and help move our brands more into the digital age. And I would assume in the beauty industry, mm -hmm. it skews towards lots of women in the company? It does. Do you think that makes things different? You know, I've been in beauty so much of my career that I don't know that I really know what it's like to be in a really, really male-dominated industry the way a lot of industries are. But I think actually a big connective tissue of my career has been supporting women. It's the thing that connects being in marketing and being in beauty and definitely executive moms. So I think about these issues actually a lot. And with regards to being in a company really heavily dominated by women, overall, I think it's fantastic. When women are great to each other, women are really great to each other. And perhaps the flip side is when women are bad to each other, they're really bad to each other. So perhaps our kind of collective goal should be shifting the, the balance of the spectrum to the great, which generally it is. You and I had spoken a little bit about having more empathy at work mm -hmm. or being more personal at work. And mm -hmm. I think as a woman especially, that's interesting in a company with a lot of women. Can you talk about that a little bit? Oh, you know, I think we're starting to see an evolution as women have become um, a minority in the workforce to now becoming a majority in the workforce. And I think one of the interesting, perhaps, byproducts of that is there's more of a conversation now about feminine qualities at work in a positive sense, whereas yeah. it used to be something about kind of subjugating those feminine qualities and acting more like a man. And now there's a lot of research that shows that the qualities that are, quote, more feminine can actually be incredibly effective in the workplace. So. I happen to think empathy is one. I mean, doesn't not to suggest that men can't be empathic, of course they can, but I think it's actually that one of the surprising secrets to how I've affected the change I have affected, and you know, I'm not always successful in doing that, but when I am, I think it's because I take the time to empathize with the people that I'm trying to connect with. When I can think it, about it through their lens, I'm suddenly making a much more powerful case because I'm talking to them in a way that is meaningful and yeah. gets to their heart as well as their mind and their logic. The conversation of women in the workplace has been elevated so much this year. Do you think it's the right issues that are being talked about? I think there continues to be a spectrum of issues and a spectrum of ways of looking at this. For me, the most important thing is that women in leadership positions have a certain sense of responsibility to other younger emerging women in terms of thinking about the totality of the example they're setting. Not just am I a successful business leader, but how can I as a whole woman empower the women under me to believe that they can be whole women too? That to me is the most important lesson and the most important way that we as a gender, if you will, can have an impact. Well, what are the things you tell those women? Well, first of all, not to think that there are easy answers because I think that's incredibly unfair yeah. and to be really reductive about it is just doing you know, women a disservice. I am lucky that I have some really amazing working mom friends and I can tell you no one situation is the same. I tend to have a job that's much more meeting intensive and my schedule is different. I travel a bit more, but not as much as some. The relationship that I have with my husband might be different than their relationship with their spouse or maybe they're doing it on their own. I know that travel is part of of your job. Can you talk about ways that you stay in touch when you're away? I always have a hard time leaving my kids, I think, much harder than they have because they're in their routine. Right. And the wonderful thing about having a spouse who's capable and supportive is when one parent is away, you know, he can pick that up. So the great thing is the continuity is there for them. It's mm -hmm. my life that's been disrupted and my routine that's different and I miss them. So I don't think I've ever gone on anything shorter than a couple days trip without having like a tear in the car service, but it's the way it is. And I, you know, I try to do little things. I just put a little chocolate kiss 
for each night that I'm gone. And so every night they get a chocolate kiss until they can get a real one again. And there's just something very sweet. And I feel like a lot of working moms, they resonate to it because it's how we feel. It's simple. It's just a little thing. And now, you know, it was really funny. My, I was going on a business trip recently and my younger daughter's so plugged into the whole thing. She's like, do you want me to get the Hershey's Kisses out for you? <laughs> I'm like, oh, so the novelty of this is gone. But, you know, she looked forward to it in a way. So let's talk a little bit about Executive Moms, which is something that you founded quite a yes. while ago, and it's pretty amazing. Well, I started it in 2002, so it's been around for quite a while now. And as with many good ideas, it was born out of just a very genuine personal insight soon after I had given birth to my first child, Hannah. Being a new mother, my first instinct was, we're gonna have no friends, my baby and I, because I'm going back to work. And secondly, I realized I was craving that sense of connection with women like myself. And I started talking to people in the meeting, well, what can I join? And everyone said, we don't know, and we don't know why we don't know, and you've gotta go start this. But I felt this sense of purpose with it. And the whole idea of Executive Moms, even the brand of it, was just very clear to me what unique place it should have in women's hearts and minds. I just knew the woman I wanted to talk to was smart and accomplished and multifaceted and didn't need some didactic approach to do your life better this way, but just wanted to be surrounded by people with similar experiences. And yeah. just the sharing is the benefit. And then we just redid the website. And having this destination that I think has a sensibility that really resonates for women is something that I am very proud of. You know, there is a whole sense of work-life balance. And a lot of women say, oh, don't I hate the word balance. How do you achieve the balance in your life? First of all, I think balance is a really tough concept because I think a synonym might seem like equilibrium and I don't know anyone who feels like they live in a state of equilibrium not in modern life and for me the answer is that it's not a fixed concept mm -hmm. that it is a constant recalculation that we have to do individually and it's going to really vary day by day based upon what the day is presenting. If I'm traveling, then the balance is completely tilted towards work. But then maybe I'll take a day off. If today I have to scoot out for a doctor's appointment or a school play, I'm going to be picking it up at home. And I can be responsible for navigating that. I know that you have two daughters, Hannah and Avery. What are some of the ways that you connect with them? My older daughter and I have been in a mother-daughter book club for several years. And boy, what a lens into hearing how your child and her friends think. My daughter and I share books, we, you know, we talk about them amongst ourselves, but yeah. I, I like the idea of a book club. When we started this, they were, gosh, like eight. And the first, I mean, I remember the first time we were the mobs, we were all sitting on the edge of the seat, kind of sort of overwhelmed by the way they were articulating their thoughts. But over time, you know, we've now gotten bolder and a little bodier and we all talk and it, it's changed because they've aged and we've now grown with this together. So I want to just end by asking you about advice. Mm -hmm. I, I would love to know if you had one piece of advice for women who are starting out or looking to make a change, what would it be? What I would most like to see is a willingness to be real and mm -hmm. authentic as women and, and bring out the best of being women. I think one of the maybe, maybe appropriate, maybe unfair notions of the business world has been this idea that you aren't supposed to be personal, you aren't ever supposed to be emotional. And I, I agree with that to a certain extent, but where it starts to be interpreted as not being authentic and genuine and humane is I, I think we're losing something. We spend a lot of time at work. Yeah. Um, work is relationship driven. Doesn't mean you have to blur it with your personal life, mm -hmm. but it means that we can still be kind of the best real version of ourselves at work. I guess the only other thing I'd say is to also be ambitious, but not expect everything all at once. The hardest thing I think for ambitious women actually is allowing yourself to feel a certain sense of contentment. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm at this level, and some people might think that's great, but then there's part of me thinking, but I should be at that level. But then I think, but you know, maybe this level's really great right now, considering I also have two kids, and I do this, and I do that. And we don't cut ourselves much of a break that way. And maybe that's good because it drives us for more, but maybe sometimes it's okay to stop and reflect on sort of that total plate. And I like to say with Executive Moms, the problem is we're over-fulfilled. So let that be our worst problem. Let that be our worst problem. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you. Please join us again next time for another episode of Perspectives. Perspectives.